A friend foolishly said, Jeff, there's no way you can combine pasta, beef, and bacon into something you can throw on the smoker. Well, challenge accepted. Grab a cocktail, sit back and watch and learn. Welcome back to Smoked Meat with Jeff. Today we're going to build a monstrosity of a stuffed meatloaf. We're going to do a mac and cheese stuffed meatloaf wrapped in a bacon weave. <clears throat> Does that sound amazing or what? Just going to need a couple of real basic non-food ingredients. You're going to need some wax paper for doing your bacon weave. And if you want to know how to do a bacon weave, check out the basic section of my YouTube uh, channel. I've got uh, how to make a bacon weave there. And we're actually going to do a double bacon weave because this thing is going to be so big I'm going to have to do a bacon weave a little bit longer to get around this thing. <clears throat> and then you're going to need, if you have a Bradley rack, grab it. Makes it real easy for moving things around. Food ingredients. Today, since this is going to be so huge, I am going to start with two pounds of ground beef. Stick with the uh, low fat content one you can, uh, lowest fat content you can find. 15 or 7% is best. If you go above 15%, you're going to get a lot of drippings out of this thing. So stick with the, the leaner meats. You're going to need a couple of eggs. Uh, I'm going to be using some Italian seasoning today, but you can season your meat however you wish. Of course, we're going to need some pasta. I'm just going to be going with some elbow, everyday macaroni and cheese kind of pasta. We're going to go ahead and cook this and get this ready to go. You're going to need some cheese, lots and lots of cheese. I've got some mozzarella cheese. I've got some sharp cheddar. We're not, of course, using the entire um, blocks of cheese in here for this today, but uh, we're going to use quite a bit of cheese to make our mac very cheesy. And since you got two pounds of ground beef, get two pounds of bacon. Thin slice bacon. We don't want to go with the thick slice on this because we're going to almost be doubling up on the, uh, the bacon around the outside. So I'm going with thin slice bacon. So, uh, Let's get started building this monstrosity. Well, I got the birds yelling at me in the background. Okay, so I've got the pasta going. Uh, word on the pasta while you're cooking it, uh, I've got the, the stove going, uh, going and the water boiling. We're gonna cook the pasta until it is almost done. You don't wanna cook it all the way like you were just gonna serve it up right away. You wanna leave them just a little bit tough because they will continue to cook inside of the meatloaf and absorb some of those juices to, to soften them up in the final round. But uh, for our meatloaf, you're just gonna take your two pounds of ground beef, crack a couple eggs into it. Make sure you don't end up with any shell in there, like I did. Little tiny piece of shell. And then go ahead and throw in your spices. However you want to spice your meatloaf. And just mix this up. Well at this point the, uh, the pasta is ready. <clears throat> My, uh, Meat has been mixed and seasoned, <clears throat> and I am working on creating the bacon weave. So remember, uh, to learn how to do a bacon weave, go ahead and visit uh, the basic section of my YouTube sec uh, uh, channel, and I can show you how to make a bacon weave. I'm doing a b double bacon weave. I'm going to do one here and then overlap for the next one because this thing is going to be so monstrous, uh, so huge that it's going to probably take two of these to really wrap it up. And if I end up with a double layer of bacon, oh darn, a little extra flavor. So, uh, you know, feel free to jump on over to the, uh, the basic section to learn how to do this bacon weave. And then when I come back, we're going to start stuffing and rolling this thing up. At this point, I have the bacon weave done. <clears throat> so now I'm going to lay down another layer of uh, wax paper over the top so I can work on my, my, my beef my meatloaf and stuffing mix. So I'm just going to put that right down across the top. Take your meatloaf. Now if you found when you uh, mixed in the eggs with this that it was just a little bit too uh, slimy for your taste, just go ahead and mix in some breadcrumbs and that'll, uh, that'll cut down the, the sliminess. So I'm going to take this meatloaf and I'm going to spread it out to make a nice thin layer of the ground beef. 
probably about three quarters of the way um, as long as my my double um, bacon weave underneath because I need to have enough bacon to make sure that it overlaps and wraps this thing up. And you're just going to put this out, nice even coat, nice thin layer. And then we'll add the next, the other ingredients. Now that I have the meatloaf down in a nice thin layer, we're just going to add our um, macaroni. And again, on this one, don't go, don't cover the entire thing. Start at one end, and then leave about a two to three inch strip down at the other end. So when we get this thing rolled up, uh, as you're doing this, things will squeeze down. Uh, but you want to leave a little bit left at the end so that it'll seal itself shut. Okay, we got a nice thick layer of uh, macaroni. And I forgot to mention, leave a little bit of space on what's going to end up being each end, because we're going to roll this up this way. I want to leave a little bit of blank area at the ends because I'm going to try and seal this up so that the cheese doesn't uh, melt out while it's cooking. So we got that. Take your cheese. I already got it ground up or uh, grated and mixed up. Put down a good layer of cheese. Remember this is mac and cheese so we want lots of cheese inside this thing. And there we go. And now admittedly the hardest part is going to be rolling this thing up. Take this top layer, leaving the bacon wrap down underneath, and use the, uh, the wax paper to kind of help you roll it up, peeling the wax paper out of the way as you go. And you don't have to go super tight on this. It will seal itself when you get to the end. I'm going to take the ends here and actually kind of pinch them closed to try and stuff in those ingredients to, to keep them in there. I got a little bust out on the side here. We'll cover that up with a little bit of uh, extra beef there. Okay, so now we got our beef all rolled up. Let's move our extra ingredients out of the way. We've got this all the way to one end. So we're going to go ahead and roll it off of the bacon weave, pull out our extra piece of wax paper there, and then use the bottom wax paper that's underneath your bacon weave to start rolling it in the opposite direction. And we're actually going to roll this up creating the bacon weave around it. And there we go. We have got our meatloaf all rolled up in our wax paper. Makes it a little bit easier to move around if you need, do need to pick this thing up. Give it a lot of support. Got this end all sealed up there, I hope. Yep, this end I need to work on a little bit. And at this point, all we're going to do is we're going to transfer, transfer it to our Bradley rack. Gingerly unroll. And if at all possible, get that ending bacon seam on the bottom, like so. When that end just doesn't want to stay sealed up. And there we go. Our bacon weave wrapped, uh, macaroni and cheese stuffed uh, meatloaf. <clears throat> so now it's just a matter of throwing this thing onto the barbe onto the smoker. Um, I am running with uh, applewood today because I'm doing some applewood smoked bacon that you can see in one of my other videos as well as the uh, uh, stuffed jalapeno poppers that I'm doing uh, as an appetizer for the kids. But this is going to go on 
Like I said, I'm smoking with applewood today. This should take between three and a half and four hours because it is so gargantuan uh, to, to get it done. You want the internal temperature around 160 degrees by the time it's done. And then we will uh, pull it off and have dinner. I may actually even glaze this thing with some uh, barbecue sauce in the last half hour because I think I have some leftover from a, a rib project that I did a couple of weeks ago. But let's get this thing onto the smoker. Take a look at that. We have been in the smoker for about two and a half hours, maybe two hours, 45 minutes. Uh, temp internal temperature is about 150 degrees right now. We want to get to around 160 degrees. And I'm going to go ahead, don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and glaze this because I've got some leftover barbecue sauce. This is just some uh, Jack Daniels original number seven recipe. I just have a little bit to use up. So I'm going to glaze this <coughs> and then put it back into the smoker to allow it to finish for about another uh, 20, 25 minutes or so. Just kind of caramelize this on the outside and then uh, it'll be time to yank this puppy off and cut it open and see what we got going on inside. I think my kids are going to eat really well tonight. They're going to love this uh, mac and cheese and bacon. Sorry, couldn't wait to get, get some pictures of this thing. This looks amazing. All right, so all done, glazed, pulled it out of the smoker. Uh, this thing is really heavy, so uh, when you go to transfer it, for it, you're probably going to need two spatulas to get underneath it to get it out of that Bradley rack. But uh, <clears throat> let's take a look. gosh look at that mac and cheese really loaded with cheese double layer of bacon all around that uh, that uh, ground beef so we got a nice stuffed meatloaf here so this is uh, Jeff with smoked meat with Jeff have fun on your smoker and uh, try something new this is gonna be awesome Till next time.